Bill Hewlett from the KFI 24-hour newsroom. A fraternity has been suspended following a report of a sexual assault at a fan house near USC. There are also six reports of drugs being placed in the women's drink during a Sigma Nu party that took place on the same night as the alleged sexual assault. USC has turned the case over to the LAPD. Gas prices are unseasonably high, much more than usual. 454 on average in LA County, 451 in the OC. Experts say the price of crude is causing the pump prices to soar. The Dodgers' postseason hopes are still alive after they exploded for an 11 2 win last night at Dodger Stadium. Chris Taylor hit three home runs. AJ Pollock hit two. The series now shifts to Atlanta. The Dodgers are down three games to two. Southland weather from KFI. Low clouds and some patchy fog this morning. Really along the coast. Otherwise, mostly sunny this afternoon. After 60 from the 72 high. Right. right now, it's 55 in Santa Ana. Laguna de Gale, 51. Long Beach, 59. And in Silva, 55 degrees. We need local from the KFI 24-hour newsroom. I'm Phil Hewitt. In Chino, this is on the 60 East Valley Reservoir Super Mona Avenue. Calcare is going to be taking away the three bright lanes until 6. Watch for heavy delays in that area. Took over the pass. This is up at 405 southbound at Mulholland. We have a crash and emergency crew picking up the carpool lane there. We drive to stop until from Valley Vista. And in South El Monte, we have a work zone that's on the 60 westbound from the 605 to Road 3 Boulevard. Two left lanes are going to be shut down for road work. KFI in the sky helps get you there faster. I'm Brian Van. The Delta variant is making COVID-19 spread faster and more easily. Variants can be more contagious, aggressive, and deadly. But we know vaccines work. Vaccinated Californians have greater protection against serious illness, hospitalization, and death. We can help stop the spread and end this pandemic. Get vaccinated and wear a mask when it can protect you and others. Find a vaccine near you at myturn.ca.gov. Brought to you by the California Department of Public Health. AMCO presents Bet You Didn't Know. Bet You Didn't Know that your car's transmission is made up of 800 pieces. Also, bet you didn't know that AMCO fixed over 40 million transmissions and that AMCO offers a nationwide warranty. Are you still driving around with that check engine light on? AMCO will read and report the trouble codes on your vehicle for free. Call them today. That's AMCO, double A, MCO. Radio advertising can connect your business with holiday shoppers wherever they go. Use iHeart Ad Builder to create an affordable custom radio ad right on your phone. Just click, listen, approve, then hear it on the radio. Create your customized ad today at iHeartAdBuilder.com. Before I started Ruder Hero Plumbing, I was an angry young man. Hello, I'm John McClain. I was angry because my dad died when I was 17 and he left me alone. I was angry because I couldn't go to college with my friends and because I had to drop out of high school. It's not a pleasant story. But as I grew older, I also grew up. I realized that my dad didn't leave me alone. He left me with values and principles that continue to shape my life. Dad said, be on time. He didn't like it when people were late. He taught me to be polite. It was something I lost, but we captured along the way. And he taught me to keep my promises because broken promises lead to broken relationships. We teach and keep these values at Ruder Hero Plumbing. I think we have a pretty good company. I know we have great people. And if one of our heroes fails to live up to these values, please call me. My private number is on the back of every Ruder Hero business card. You can also reach us at RuderHero.com. Thank you. Help CBA keep our community safe and healthy by participating in National Prescription Drug Takeback Day, October 23rd. Find a collection site near you at BEATakeback.com. Do your part to lower overdose deaths and prevent drug misuse before it starts. Contact your license 147781. Doctor Goodrich taught Kenny to do things the right way, not the easy way. And now every dental technician has a digital assistant named Duncan. Digital Duncan is a genius, just like his name says. Back during the Cold War, the U.S. government came to my dad and said, we need you to build a giant freezer at the test site and bring it down to 50 degrees below zero. They wanted to make sure their nuclear triggers would function if they had to send warheads to Russia during the wintertime. So dad designed a cascade system that used weird gases like argon and CO2 instead of freon. He and I got that system down to 50 degrees below zero in the Nevada desert in the summertime. When the U.S. government needs a genius solution, they ask Duncan Good. And when your ghetto technician needs a genius solution, they ask Digital Duncan. Ghetto has been awarded 114 patents for cool stuff we've invented. And we believe number 115 is on the way. Ghetto, G-O-E-G-T-F, will keep you cool, but it's hard to sell. 
KFI AM640, more stimulating talk. Shall I
at p2p.org. That's p, the number two, p, dot org. And welcome back to Coast to Coast, George Noy with you along with Steve Ubaney. His uh, books we're talking about, of course, we just uh, talked about Who Murdered Elvis. This segment we'll talk about Who Murdered Diana. Next hour, Who Murdered FDR. And then we'll take calls as well. Princess Diana, of course, was born July 1st, 1961. She died August 31st, 1997 on a tragic car crash in Paris. She was 36 years old. That was a very sad moment for a lot of people, Stephen. Yeah, she was fantastic. She was had a supermodel at the time with Mother Teresa, wasn't she? Yeah, she was. Now, the relationship with uh, Charles was going downhill. They were in the process of a divorce. Uh, everything was a mess. She started dating a guy named Dodie Fayad. Uh, and tell us about that event, that, that night in Paris that led them into the car. Were well, they like trying to get away from the paparazzi or something? No, what happened was Diana was receiving death threats for a week or two before that. So initially they were supposed to go to a restaurant in Chazonet in Paris, and Dodie's security team saw some very suspicious people outside. So they went back to the Ritz Carlton, or the Ritz, um, where Dodie Alfie's father, Mohammed, owned, and they were going to stay there. Well, the people showed up there. So they oh. had to develop a plan to get the princess out of there. So that's what was the catalyst for the whole thing. And you know, actually, in my book, there are pictures of these people, you know, little snapshots of what they saw on video they had them for So um, that's why they ended up having to do this, this fantastic maneuver where paparazzi is waiting out front, the front door, and they want to put on a show saying they'll be out in a minute, and they snuck you know, the princess uh, and uh, three other people off the back. Was the, was the driver drunk as well? Oh, that, that, that was, man, no. The toxicology report wasn't even back when the media started running that, just like Elvis said. Like, oh. I mean, they weren't even, again, this is media spin, it's intentional, and they had to blame someone, so they blamed the dead guy. Mm -hmm. like, and you know what also really kind of shocked me was the fact that she was she died in the hospital, so she was alive in that car that was all mangled up, and there were pictures taken of her by photographers of her lying there all mangled up and stuff. Didn't anybody try to help her? They were prevented from helping her. There was one guy. Um, I can't recall his name. He was trying to open the door to help her, and the people who were securing the scene wouldn't let him. So the pictures that you're seeing out there about her being dead in the car, that's stage, that's phony. There are real pictures of her in the car in my book, and you can clearly see she's upright, she's grimacing, and she's talking. She was alive. It took them two hours to get her four miles to a hospital. She'd have been better off ordering a oh. Domino pizza, which delivers in 30 minutes, and riding back to the driver, she'd still be alive. What was it about Diana, Steve, that people who were involved in this apparent murder wanted her dead? Well, she could get presidents and prime ministers and even dictators to bend her will. And she was pushing this uh, landmine ban. And next after that, she was going to do a small arms ban. So when you come between the international bankers and their and their money, uh -huh. it's not going to end well. And the arms dealers, I guess. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. This was um, and they, all the people who were the biggest arms brokers of the day were, were all spying on her. The United States had uh, over uh, 1,200 pages of transcripts of her phone call. So everybody was watching her. Was she that powerful, Steve? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Whatever she wanted, she got. She could, it was a double-edged sword. She could influence the media as she wanted on a whim. That was, that was the good part about her popularity after she reinvented herself from being a divorcee. The bad part about it is, she was a daughter. 
And paparazzi is not involved with his dad. Uh, that's, uh, that's another exactly. myth that's out there. Dodi Fayyad's father was convinced that somebody killed him. Okay, I'm blessed. He spent $13 million dollars um, uh, investigating it. He came up with more evidence than the pageant report, I can tell you that. Um, it, was, it was really something else. The pageant report was a British document which um, it was a mirror it was actually the Warren Commission report. I was going to parallels out of that time. But um, they're incredible. Um, right down to blaming the dead guy. Um, but the, uh, the pageant, pageant report was nothing more than the British damage control document to show the people, look, we looked into it. Um, it, was, uh, it was 121 months after her death to having the inquest. So the British Coroner's Act in 1988 states the inquest shall be held as soon as practicable. Well, I don't know what their definition of as soon as practice, practice rule is, but I bet you sooner than 10 years, one month, and three days. Absolutely. I mean, it's, I mean this is it's beyond beyond, you know. Steve, was the royal family shaken up by this death? Very. Yeah, very. They, um, and one of the things that is interesting about how I research this is everybody else is in the UK and they look at it through the royal lens. I'm from America, right. so I look at it through their eyes. They were definitely shaken up. Um, they didn't want to revolt. They don't want to lose the monarchy. They were they didn't know what to do. They had no idea what to do. It was their worst day ever. What was your aha moment when you started investigating this leading up to writing the book Who Murdered Diana? What was Doctor. that? What, is there a lot of things were popping? Absolutely. It was so hard to pick out one thing. Um, uh, the witnesses that were silent, that went forward to the French police and gave testimony after testimony after testimony, and it was either discarded or lost. Um, there were, when they left at the back of the, um, of the rift, they had to go through two, tun two tunnels um, on the route. And this route was secured for them by, by Intel. Henry Paul, the driver, was working for Intel from multiple countries because he worked hotel security there. And he was fingered by uh, a former MI6 agent as being an informant. But he was working for them, trying to save the contract. He wasn't some random nut job. Mm -hmm. you know, so they go through the first tunnel, and there are witnesses coming forth saying there were motorbikes around the car that had gone. That's why the Mercedes was going at such a high rate of speed. And, and driving all over the place to, to get away from them. Exactly. So they come into the second tunnel, and they have um, this light Fiat Uno kind of lingering there at a slow rate of speed. And what he did was he performed a fit maneuver. And if you don't know what a pit maneuver is, they, so they do a NASCAR. The police are now doing it. They get up alongside the car, and they just touch the back quarter panel just to swerve you and spin you out. And that's exactly what the purpose of that Fiat Uno was there. And it doesn't matter who was driving it. It didn't book written. This guy was driving it. I don't care if the Loch Ness Monster was driving it. The fact of the matter is, it was driven, you know? How soon did she die in the hospital after the accident? Almost on impact. Yeah, she was bleeding out. She was that mangled up. So, um... And Fayed was in the seat, coming right back with her, wasn't he? Yeah, and there was something very suspicious about this car that I came up with, and I, somebody else researched this. You mean the, the, one they were, the one they were in? Yeah, this was not their normal car. This was just whatever was left over in the motor pool. So, my, I, I couldn't figure out, you know, look, if I saw the crash test rating on this car. Why is this just this killed them when they passed the crash test rating at higher speed. Problem was, this car had been enabled, it had been stolen and flipped and put back together. And it was missing fuses, um, relays were missing, and there were all kinds of issues with this car. You're going to put the most famous woman in the world in this? Well, no wonder the car just crumpled up and fell apart on him. Mm -hmm. Good point. 
So there's a lot going on here. There's a lot in that book. Were they, in, in, in Europe, yeah, we're doing three uh, incredible stories all, all in one night. Was, were they, those who were responsible for this, waiting for the right moment? And was this the right moment, or did this happen by chance? What do you think? Didn't happen by chance at all. Um, on September 19th was the next meeting for the Intercontinental, Intercontinental as a land bank mine at, I hope I got that right. <laughs> um, there was 100 countries on board. September 19th was going to be when they were going to take it. All right, they were going to sign it. She couldn't make that meeting. So because she died just prior to that, the press never even attended it, and President Clinton actually withdrew from it. Wow. So, I mean, there's, uh, there's, there's a lot behind this. Have you, been, have you been nominated for a Pulitzer Prize for your work? Then I won't be. I won't be. <laughs> too, too, too controversial? Way too controversial. Way. I had to start my own publishing company because no one's going to publish me on me. You know? Oh, way. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, you're right. It, it is published by you. Yeah, it's, um, when you tell the truth, it, it's great to honor the people and tell the truth. But sometimes the backlash, and I don't mean, you know, the majority of people who read my book, my books, love them. And most people have been fantastic. Every now and then, you'll hear something from someone, you know, that isn't nice. And publishers don't want to deal with that. So I had to tell stories. By the way, thank you for the very nice notes that you included in the... Uh, oh, that's, that's great. Thank you very much. Thanks for all the good news, George. Very kind of you. To be sure, and in, in your work, like I said, I, I'm an old time news guy, Steve. And uh, these stories are just incredible. And the fact that you've been so perceptive to pick up on these details that I don't know if the media picked up on it and just won't report on it or what, but you you have and you have the guts to point it out to people. Yeah, I mean, all of these high profile deaths have things in common planet evidence. You know, Elvis Presley's death, they were planted to her just to throw people off. There yet, yet, yet there were no, no, no puncture marks in the body, right? Nope, not one. Sonny Liston was the same way. Sonny Liston was horrified at me. There were needle marks in his body, but there was no drugs in his system. Uh, JFK, you have the pristine bullet that was found on Conway Strutter. Uh, Marilyn Monroe, the glass was on the wrong side when they broke in. You know, um, Princess Diana, you had things that are entered to confuse people. This photo of her being pregnant. Dorothy Kilgallen, another case. Sure. Oh, and on and on and on. And there's more sanitized death scenes. Uh -huh. Elvis Presley, when, when Dan Warlick went to investigate the death scene, everything had been cleaned up. The bed had been made. Everything. Same thing with the tunnel. Diana was, she was dead 10 minutes, they called special equipment in to reopen the tunnel and to scrape and sanitize the tunnel and scrub it down. That path. Instead that path. Of, they should have shut it down as a crime scene. That's, oh my god, that's why they make crime scenes. They get one chance to investigate a crime scene. Just one. It's like butterfly wings. Once you touch it, that's it. It's over with. Now with her dead, with her out of the way, what did that do to those that were responsible? Well, it allowed the it allowed the cash cow to keep rolling. You know, it's sorry, it's it's a horrible thing to imagine. But there are countries in this world whose entire economy exists on the sale legally or illegally of arms. You're right. There are no, you're right. Of dollars. She was upsetting the globe with the finances of the globe with what she was doing. And there's no way that she could continue to have this done. So um, the royal family was involved in the cover-up, and they used intel that was part of the royal family. But the royal family had everything to lose and nothing to gain by trifling with Diana. You know, they're they're obsessed with two things: keeping the monarchy going, um, keeping the money flowing to them, right? Um, you know, showing up and being ceremonial, and staying away from people. Yeah. The last thing they want is to take her out and have an uprising to threaten the monarchy. There's no way they would get involved in that. So they were horrified.
And she was loved by people, wasn't she, Diana? Yeah, one thing is she, what she did, it was really fantastic. She had a great way about her. What a terrific, what a terrific way she had about her. She would reach out to the people, and she would go shake hands and see babies, and the Royals didn't do that. So, I don't know if it was her intention to do this, but you know, she was making them look bad. Probably wasn't even her intention. She was just a compassionate, caring person. So when the Royals would come out, when she was in the Royal family, you know, she would go over and say hi to people. And I think it was just her nature. What happened between her and Prince Charles? Was it just uh, a breakup, or was he playing around with something, extramarital affairs? Uh, there was a lot of Royal crock flopping going on. I'll put it that way. All right. Um, he was involved with a woman long before um, Princess Diana came in. Is that the one he ended up marrying again, Camilla? Yeah, yep. Um, she seemed like a nice lady. Yeah, she did not nice job. Um, the, um, the, the Queen actually said Diana. The Queen did? Really? Yeah, she selected. But um, well, she made a good pick. Yeah, oh, yeah, she had to give her approval because the Spencer, one of the big misconceptions is that Diana was a commoner. She was not a commoner at all. I mean, her family traced back to the royalty in both England and France. So, I mean, her father was the eighth Earl of Spencer. Yeah, they were royalty, to be sure. Absolutely. It just so happened that when she came into the media eye, she was doing menial jobs. Well, stay with us, Steve. We're going to take a quick break. We're at the top of the hour. We're going to come back and talk about uh, FDR and that incredible story, who murdered FDR. And then we'll take calls next hour with you, too, on the second half of the program. Find out more about tonight's guest. Log on to coasttocoastam.com. Thank you. 